This episode of Taste Test Live is sponsored by Lonely Cubes. Post from one square out to prove a lonely, empty cubicle can be slightly cheerier with a three-inch yellow boost of positivity. Learn more at Instagram.com slash Lonely Cubes. This week's episode of Taste Test Live is also brought to you in part by our audio sponsor, WJCT 89.9 FM. WJCT is the NPR member public radio station in Jacksonville, Florida. The station has been on air since 1972 and airs NPR news and talk during the week and a mix of news, talk, eclectic music on the weekends. Want to help WJCT? Visit their website today at WJCT.org to find out how you can be a part of community-supported public broadcasting. If you like Taste Test and you want to keep the music digestion sessions going every week and get some exclusive bonus content, stick around afterwards for details. But first, let's start the show. Have a taste. You are now in the zone. Zone. The zone with Taste Test Live. What's jazzing? What's jazzing? Hey, hey. Hi. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> What's jazzing? What's jazzing? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hola. It's time for Taste Test Live. <laughs> hey, I'm Damian Lamar, producer and host of Taste Test, the urban mix show on the radio at WJCT 89.9 FM, Northeast Florida's NPR station. Taste Test is a one hour music program that airs weekly on Saturdays and Tuesday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern and 8 Pacific. I'm very glad to be back again for another week of industry updates, music. Music, news, laughs, fun. And joining me in Studio One are my Taste Test Live co-hosts, Mr. Blue Francois Extraordinaire and the lovely Miss MJ Baker. Welcome back, peeps. Hello, everybody. I'm hey. waving at you. Hey. Hello. How have you guys been? Great. Fabtabulous. Blue, 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 you don't sound convincing this week. <sighs> you know, I, I just wish I was able to stay through the whole show at Saturday. I went to see this live guy perform. I didn't get to watch the whole show, so I'm disappointed with myself. <sighs> but you did a good job this weekend, man. Thank you. <laughs> you did amazing. I've picked up three gigs since then. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, the vibe was nice. Thank you. Yeah, the vibe was really dope. It was yeah. really great. Yeah. Yeah. Enough about me. Okay. Blue, can you tell our first-time listeners what they can expect on Taste Test Live? <laughs> yes. On this podcast, you'll hear what we call music digestion sessions, where we discuss the latest news in the music and entertainment industry each week. On Taste Test Live, we feature artist interviews, awesome backstories, and occasionally have an exclusive song from one of our guests. Yep. So it is our goal to keep our podcast subscribers happy by offering new and fresh content. And if you have a new album, single, book, movie uh dance choreography piece whatever it is i think you need to contact us how can they contact us blue yes they can do that by heading over to our website at tastetest.live head over there to our contact page and complete the form to be a guest on our show yeah i think you want to do that like asap because our calendar's filling up we're already booking already into july you're not lying so um I have some exciting news. We have a guest joining us in our studio mm. and will be part of this week's Put This In Your Mouth segment. Um, I'm excited to welcome our guest, Kim Retegas. Yes. Yay, she's a Kim. friend, songwriter, and she's a band diva. We'll explain that a little bit later. Yes, I've got questions. Yeah. Oh. Uh -oh. I can't wait for this. Musician <laughs> to musician, woman to woman. Yes. Oh. Bring it. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling it. <laughs> so, uh, so, Blue. What do we have on deck for? Put this in your mouth this week. What, oh, what, what time is it? I, I need. To oh, 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 oh! Let me tell you what time it is. It is. Poop. Wait. Put this in your mouth. Wait. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was trying to do? Put this in your mouth. Did Put it. this in your mouth. <laughs> Put this. I may. I'm actually like sample hey, chicka -laka, that. Yeah. Chicka -laka, chicka -boom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, ready to go. Let's do that. Put this in your mouth. Put, Put this, this in, in your, your mouth. mouth. Hey. Hey. Chicka laka chicka laka chicka boom. Hey. Oh, we mixing them up. Anyway, we good. We good. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> All right. So if this is any indication on how this segment's gonna go, I'm excited already. Yes. yes. For sure. Okay. 
Well, a source on CNN had reported um, there is a big colorism debate over reports of Will Smith's new role um, where he would play the father um, to the uh, movie for Venus Williams and, you know, their story about, you know, the stuff that they dealt with and just, you know, they're being competitive and just they're just going to do a, a movie about them. Now, the debate sparked over the color complexion difference between um, Serena Serena and Venus Williams' father and Will Smith and he, you know, they felt like there's other um, candidates who could play the role who was a darker complexion. Now, my take on it was knowing Will Smith, you know, you know, impeccable track record with his, you know, skill and being able to deliver. And he takes on the role because, you know, remember Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, he done. And it's just like I didn't have a problem with it. And if you look at, you know, he's it's not that their father is that much. dark. I mean, he's dark skin, but he's I mean, he's just a little bit darker than me. So I didn't think it was a big deal. But again, you know, um, they feel like I've heard I read reports where they felt like, you know, him being brighter will help sell the role like I don't even think that was the intentions I mean mm-hmm. how y'all feel about it well I don't know ladies you want to chime in I have a whole lot to say <laughs> I'm on the fence about the colorism issue yeah in regards to an actor portraying somebody he or she is not because that's the whole point is you are you're supposed to convince your audience that you are this person um however you know the question comes into play is how how much is the actor supposed to physically look like that person yeah right and you know in order to you're trying to convince your audience and you know i've seen her father and yeah. i feel like she is significantly he is significantly darker yeah. than will smith right. and somebody had asked me about this if I were to play a a Hispanic character and there was a big issue when Jennifer Lopez played Selena. Yes, I remember. A I remember. lot of Mexican Americans, they were not happy with that selection. However, me as a Puerto Rican woman, she's Puerto Rican, I was very impressed with the job that she did. But I'm also very light skinned and I could not play Selena, I feel like because of my skin color. I also could not play Celia Cruz. I can sing some Celia Cruz, but I can't play her because she is a black woman to the eyes. Mm -hmm. She's a black Cuban woman. Mm -hmm. So I, that's where the line comes into play. That's valid. So, I mean, I guess my concerns with colorism is that we're still having conversations about color in 2019. (laughs) And that's, that's what, that's visual. It's, it's yeah. But when, when you, when it, I guess when you're, when it comes to casting and picking a person for the role, given the fact that and I don't know Selena or Venus Venus Williams father that well so I can't really speak on his color I've never met I've never seen him he's a typical black dad who was hard on his kids My, my uncle would call it dark brew yeah, he's definitely right. well, personality group. wise. Will yeah. Smith can pull it off. I mean, I was impressed yes. with the job he did with Muhammad yeah. Ali, even even physically. Right. Yeah. I think he could pull it off. And see, I don't. And so my thoughts on this is, um, yeah, do I agree that there were pr- plenty other candidates that could have done it? But um, I heard someone discussing it and they said, and I agree. I don't know that they thought about his color. Mm. I think they thought Will Smith. Because he actually Will Smith is one of the executive producers. Oh. So his well, his production Which company equals money. Right. Mm-hmm. So his production company um is one of the benefactors to getting it yeah. produced. So, you know, I just think that, you know, he produced it and I also think they felt like, Okay, hey, here we go. We got a superstar right here. Yeah, that would that help can, sell the movie. Right, and I think he will embody the character. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think uh, his skin color had anything to do with it. Right. You know, um, you know, but then again, I mean, we think about the movie that came out a couple of years ago about Nina Simone mm. and how... Um, Oh, what's the actress's name? Um, Zoe. She, uh, Zoe. Zoe. Yeah. Zoe. Um, it was Dominican. Yes. Right. And so she, a lot of people had issues with that. So again, but I don't feel that she acted. See, she didn't. To me, she didn't embody Nina Simone. So no. that was mm-hmm. my that was my problem yeah. with Zoe the movie. Saldana. That's her name. Zoe Saldana. Saldana. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, but I think Will Smith can embody this character. So, you know, I just feel like sometimes we're a little bit too sensitive. 
you know, like, um, like right now they're they're very very sensitive when the the uh, trailers keep, before the trailer came out for the new Aladdin movie, they're pretty sensitive about him being blue. Really? Are you kidding me? Yeah, the genie, the, the genie. genie, but the genie is blue. Thank in you. The, say, the, say that one more time for those. But the genie is blue. Okay, say it in you. Spanish. Pero el genie es azul. <laughs> yeah, <it's> sexy, right? <laughs> anyway, um, my my my, uh, I'm gonna wrap up so we can move to the next thing. But um, I felt like Don Cheadle could have been a good candidate. But again, like she said, you know, he's also contributing money to the, you know, to the movie. He's producing. I mean, he's one of the executive producers. So why not? You know, because he's going to sell the movie. So anybody mm-hmm. else, I don't think. Yeah. You know, but I will say this before we close. His their dad is so funny. Like just when they was like being interviewed in the, in the early nineties, like he would like he was like cut though. Like he like they was trying to ask questions about them when they was younger. Like he was like very like candid. He was very like sharp with his words, and he didn't let anybody take advantage of his daughters. And he, you could tell he was like a like he had like a southern personality. The only person who I know who could pull off is Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this wouldn't be the first time that Hollywood has done this throughout its history oh, anyway. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about how many movies they make about Egypt. <laughs> right. I was thinking about that. I just want to be where's careful. Egypt, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> <In Africa. laughs> okay. Where is Cleopatra's nose? That's what I want to know. Oh yeah, that yeah. <laughs> who they got by the, who they who they have cast? No, because for that? historically she has uh, the bump. Right. On not a, a not a very attractive nose. You who know, they have cast it never for seen it. it. She always has perfect nose. Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. Elizabeth I know, Taylor. Back in the, um, the 50s and yeah. 60s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. She was known for her intelligence. Yeah, yeah her so. Her conversation, mm-hmm. among many things. Um, What's next? Uh, Associated Press had um, said that Jaden ben- Jaden Smith Foundation and a church, uh, they're working the- together to bring water to Flint, Michigan. Like, I'm, like, I'm trying to think, like, why hasn't it been this has been since 2014 like why is it taking so long for millionaires for people who have money who could just easily just write it off like why is it taking so long just to get clean water to Flint, Michigan but anyway and, um, and Jaden's only 20 years old he's only 20 years old like when I saw it I was just like I was happy but then again I was just like if I was in a yeah. position to do it I would have d- been dead it, you right. know? like I've donated water to Red Cross um, you know I don't think I did anything more than $50 but I've donated personally but if I had the funds I would have you know easily and there, and there was rapper who you know bought bunches of water took it up there so I, I don't want to discredit anybody to help but it, it, it took it, like I just don't understand why it's taking so much just to clean the water there like like what? What's the problem? I think there's a, there's an infrastructure problem. It's a problem mm-hmm. with the pipes and how it was laid. That it's 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 a big problem, uh, and I think you know. This is another story for another podcast. Right, another but, podcast, you know, right. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, the government or those individuals that are in charge have no problem allocating funds elsewhere. But why spend billions of dollars on a wall? No, no, sh- no. you know, I don't want to get into politics, but why spend billions of dollars on a wall when you could spend like less than half of that to... That's a great question. To yeah. have an irrigation a or water question. system. Great question. I don't think any of us have the answer to that. Right. Because we don't have the power, really. Um, you know, we can protest, we can vote, we can do all of these things. We can things. think right. You can, <laughs> you know, it all starts at the <laughs> local level, in my opinion. Yeah. You really need to pay attention to who your local leaders are, because they're the ones that are feeding the leaders at the top. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, That's so. words yeah. words to the wise, by yeah. the way. Yeah. So, yeah. shout out to um, to Jaden Smith because um, you know they had a big lead problem. You know, has reached the waters and it was like making people sick. So, shout out to uh, Jaden Smith. He's um, they also working with um, the First Baptist Missionary Church in there, and they're going to be teaming up to make sure they you know get water. And I think his mother and you know and Will Smith also is part of that as well. So, um, they they, um, they said that they're going to be distributing over five million bottles of water to residents there. So, um, so yeah. So, shout out to him. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it's good next. to see young people yeah. trying to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. That makes me really happy about the future. Me too. Um, I want to I wanna introduce something that we haven't talked about. Um, we, we, we mentioned it, but we haven't talked about it. But I, I, 
I want to news.com Australia reported um, the Leaving Neverland had omitted some details about the Michael Jackson case, which was the FBI um, um, not only interviewing Michael Jackson back in 1980s, but also um, investigating him and the charges, the allegations, all that had been dropped and it was sealed. So the records were expunged. It was expunged. But no, no, I'm just saying like, you know, they, they did, they opened an invest. they launched uh, someone, in, one of the people that was in the, leaving. I don't want to get into detail, cause, but one of the people that's in the movie, because I haven't watched it, they, there were, back in the 1980s, there was a alleged, there was a launch of an investigation, you know, on Michael Jackson back in the 80s, mm-hmm. when this first started happening, and they, you know, they staked out. They tapped his phone. So they, they completed was, the investigation. And they dropped the they charges. Dropped the charges. Sealed the records. Sealed the records. It, which is called an expungement. And somehow, they did not bring that up in the documentary against Michael Jackson. So all this stuff that's going on, they didn't. They never mentioned. Hey, all the, the investigations that was brought to Michael Jackson were all dropped. They was all settled out of court, and it, no, there was no convictions. But they so what I want to bring up, my thing is that I want to bring up like I don't want to talk about it, but I just feel like with his legacy, they had a contract with, a, you know, against you no know, with the estate, the people who produced the movie to not release anything that was damning that would hurt his um, his uh, career or any, you know, in, they wasn't supposed to talk about any of this. And they still released this documentary after all charges have been. You want to know why? Why? Money, 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 money. Money. Okay. But he's a. <laughs> he, 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 here's the thing I, I, I have a problem with. <laughs> and I, you know, I respect. Okay. I respect, you know, me being from Haiti, you know, I, I you know, I have African roots. I respect my black culture but I also have to respect European culture because no matter how many people are being accused or convicted of rape or taken advantage of like I don't never see anybody in a a predominantly white culture you know damn their own or attack their own like they don't do that if something happened it's swept under the rug or it's a secret you know of course I'm not you know saying that's okay but that's a very mysterious stereotypical statement though huh it's a stereotypical statement what you mean it's a stereotype what you mean what are you saying explain that you don't know any of the like basically you're saying the black culture has the crab mentality and we have a problem oh no I apologize no okay what I'm saying is that I feel like if somebody, okay, like for instance, Drake pulled his music, he pulled that song from his album, Matters to Me with Michael Jackson on, mm-hmm. based off this documentary. Um, I'm, I don't want to mention R. Kelly, but. With, you, th- but thanks for mentioning R. Kelly. They, <laughs> they, they, he's being affected. No matter, that's yeah. his livelihood. Mm-hmm. They pull his music. Mm-hmm. Uh, any of our um, black icons or anything, we immediately, we immediately, uh, no matter if it's proven guilty in court or not, we immediately attack, talk about, joke, and immediately bring attention and awareness to it immediately. Mm-hmm. Like if if they was to expose, you know, Donald Trump, like you know, like with the whole Stormy Daniels thing, they have proof that he paid people to say hey shut up yeah we did something we did this hey shut up leave it alone so if people around Donald Trump because Donald Trump is uh, you know he's exempt from the law you know like he's a what do you call it Uh, what's the word I'm looking for he is uh, I can't think of the word but anyway he can't be charged if anything if if they do have proof they can't charge him right now while he's president Mm -hmm. like doesn't like he's um, you know he's he's good right so everybody around him have to take the fall you know but if he paid for a prostitute, did whatever while he was married, or if he done things while he was in office, you know, like, like, okay, hey, you know, he's a president, forget about it. But if that was a, if it was Barack Obama, it would have been totally different. They would have attacked him. He probably would have been removed from president, you know, from being a president. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm saying is that I do have a respect for other cultures protecting their icons, but us black culture, I think we, we quickly attack and then we... I'm, I'm gonna, I don't agree. Uh, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't agree that we quickly attack because 
when this was when this uh, investigation started in the eighties, people didn't turn their back on Michael Jackson. Right. People protected him. Um, I think same thing with R. Kelly. You know, I mean, and with other people. But I think the season that we're in is one of people saying we can no longer just say be okay with it Mm -hmm. because you're at this level you know and you know I get what Drake is doing because even if Drake personally may say I think this is BS I don't believe it he's considering his overall brand absolutely and saying as a businessman right I have to pull. I don't want to pull it, but, but I, I got to. to because I have to protect the overall brand. But personally, he may feel, "Hey, I'm 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 with Mike, but my but I can't afford to yeah to to make this you know to make it seem like like I'm on you know on his side or whatever like that. I mean, even the fact of Oprah saying. I'm not attacking Michael Jackson. I'm looking at the bigger picture and and other people who have been in these positions and who have been taken advantage of, you know, and because Oprah doesn't know the truth. Right. She really doesn't. But she's going in there, you know, her reasoning is, hey, let's what if this has really happened to other people? You know, let's give it a bigger yeah, scope. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's push the envelope a little bit and have him address what these accusers are saying. Right. Right. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's, there's power in numbers. Why are there so many women coming forth doing this? Right. In, in the case of Michael Jackson, current subject, why are so many people still saying this went on? Right. Now, let's look at the law for a second. Right. The records were expunged. Mm-hmm. The case was dropped. Right. The man is dead. Right. Why are we still talking about this? Right. Now, obviously people's lives were still affected, right? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're growing up and they're still being affected by what may have happened. Because right. I don't know. You know. Yeah. yeah I don't, don't, I don't, know, we yeah. don't know what, ha- what happened. But when is, it, when is enough enough? Right. Mm. When, when, do we, when do we say, okay, that happened. It's, it's bad that it happened. Michael Jackson has already paid his price once in, right. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the court of law. And now he is not here to defend himself. And yet we keep defaming his name. Right. When are we going to say, okay, he did this bad on Michael Jackson. We walk away from Michael Jackson. There's a there's a really good quote in one of my favorite movies. It was it's by uh uh it's called Merlin. Years ago Merlin was on and I forget this I think Sam Neill is the actor that played okay, Merlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Queen Mab is this evil sister. Her sister is the, the the queen in the lake, right? Mm-hmm. And she was she was a Merlin's friend. And Queen Mab is this one that she's talking about. <laughs> she's talking like this. Right? <laughs> you know and he's she's threatening him and he said to her you you can't you can't hurt us anymore you know what happened he says you know what happens to legends they become forgotten yeah they become and they forgotten. said wow. queen mab we he turned and said to her we all forget you they turned everybody turned their back and they walked out and guess what happened to her she disappeared she disappeared, she disappeared. wow That's so we can do that we mm-hmm. still have that power yeah. to say Guess what? We we can all say R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, all these other accusers. We could all say, guess what? We're not giving you any more media attention. We're not talking about you anymore. We know right. what, what's done. We're done talking about it. Right. Let me ask you this. And we we you're not a legend anymore. We forget you. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Would, do you feel sympathetic that he didn't have a childhood? He didn't be. He wasn't able to live like a, a normal child. Because I think at the age of five, he was singing to six. So you know, he had the group. Do you feel like he kind of connect to younger children to like relive those moments? To, to, to his innocence? I'm not a psychologist where, by where any means. I wouldn't the be kids. surprised if he was a victim. Mm. When right. you look at the history of children in Hollywood and these things are well, coming yeah. out now with the whole Me Too movement, yeah. it's triggering that PTSD and that's probably why these people are speaking even though they're speaking of the dead um, whether it's true or not something has triggered them to come out right. 
And this is the environment we're in. We're in the I've had enough and I don't care how long ago this happened. It Ooh. happened and I'm still suffering. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I that's, see you that's in the why spotlight, it's being exacerbated. Right. Then. And it's mm-hmm. coming back to wow. me. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening. So I've always felt like after what I heard about Corey Haim and Corey Feldman, what they went through on their on the Lucas set, mm-hmm. um, Corey uh Haim yeah, specifically yeah, that, yeah. so disturbing um, what happened to um, these these female child actresses I would not be surprised if Michael Jackson was a victim himself right right and I do believe that one of the victims father who committed suicide did say that he was a victim he was a victim of child abuse when you know so when he became an adult and supposedly dealing with this if it had really happened it would have been something that was eerily normal to him mm. right and yeah. this is what people don't think about in regards to PTSD is the changes that happen to you mentally yeah. as wow. you grow mm-hmm. wow yeah mm-hmm. that's good that's good wow uh, we hope that there is a <laughs> podcast out there that talks about all these things in yes. depth yes this is music news and uh, obviously the music industry has been um, it's been affected by a lot of this type of right. behavior. Uh, of behavior for yeah. a long 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 time right yeah so the, whole, uh, the entire entertainment the entire industry. entertainment yeah yeah all yeah. The, for the sake of entertaining yes. well and you know what here's the thing if we you know take it on a deeper level entertainment is seductive mm. Mm. you know spiritually the energy is seductive Can't because what does seduction do? We do, we try we make it sexual, but really Brings seduction draws. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So as entertainers, we draw people in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and and then intentionally then, or not, correct? Just and by then, the nature of what we do, right? Okay. And then so so then you have that dark side that perverts it mm-hmm. and oh. takes advantage of the innocence of people. Mm-hmm. of others that's great well said do you that's see what I'm really saying that's really good well and said. so and so in this season of exposure mm-hmm. you know these things the, the dark side of it is being exposed mm-hmm. you know because there has to be a balance between light and dark right mm-hmm. and so for so long you know we've ha- lived in this light so to speak mm-hmm. but there was always darkness under the bottom underneath and it's being exposed so that the light can be pure yeah. do you see what I'm saying so people can feel that safe that is the most brilliant thing I have heard today or in, even in reference yeah. to this subject yeah. matter at all I mm-hmm. mean that wow those yeah. are powerful words. That's mm-hmm. a, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Wow. Y'all meditate on that right there for a minute. <laughs> Ying and the yang. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as True. above, below. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. True. Wow. Um, okay. What else we got on deck? Uh, Breakfast Club had reported that Empire could possibly face uh, cancellation ending the season, uh, which I will not be mad about. And uh, due to <laughs> just <a> hater. <laughs> <laughs> because of the uh, indictment that um, you know that's been set forth um, by the grand jury in uh, Chicago, and um, yeah, so, so the, is that a Fox News decision? Uh, or, or, not, excuse me, not Fox News. The Fox Fox Network is that their decision to well, cancel n- Empire no, because it is it, a Fox show? No, it's. Um, no, Breakfast Club had a source that was revealed to them that um, they're talking possible cancellation because of the negative press that's coming around it. And um, and then I know some people, um, they were saying that um, there's some people who may not want to watch it because, because they, you know, a lot of people wasn't, a lot of, there was, a, Jesse had a lot of fans, mm-hmm. but then there was also people who were not fans of the other members. So it's like, with all this going on, I don't think they're going to, their ratings will be not good. That's really unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So, moving on. Moving on. So new we releases? new releases. Yes. Um, before we talk about new releases, let's have a moment and talk about have a taste. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. Yeah, yes, the yes, have yes. a taste segment. So last week, um, I had the dubious honor of playing. I was really ex- first of all. Let me let me say I, I was very very excited about what I played on the radio on Saturday. Um, mm-hmm. Going back a little bit, I was driving. I was really, really excited to share this show that we played on Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was excited about playing that the week before. Right. Okay. But on the way to the station, 
to, you know, do my show. I wanted to be hot and fresh, like, like you know, cake, uh, Krispy Kreme, hot now. Yeah, hot now. You know? Come now. Yum. Yeah, yeah, yum. I wanted to be yum and tasty. Taste test is supposed to be yum, right? Mm-hmm. right. Well, on my way to the station, guess what happened? The Monster Jam was happening. Oh. Uh. Oh, excuse me. The Monster Jam was over. And they were letting everybody Rapid. leave. To, in wow. all the lanes were exit lanes. <laughs> So I couldn't get anywhere near the station to do my show. And I was gridlocked on Washington Street. I sat on Washington Street for 45 minutes These drivers wow. in traffic. You should have walked. It's not that far. I could have, but I still would have been late to the station. And my show would have still repeated like it did. And I'm sitting in my car and I had a few choice words. And I even said something that I had to cancel out universally. <laughs> because I I, I I spoke something ill and I'm like, oh no, I did not mean to say that because you say things when you're so mad yeah. that you, you can say things about yourself that are damning. So words, words have power and I'm like, wait a minute, true. see? Yeah. Did you cleanse your chakra? I did. Okay, good, good. Root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, you third eye. How did you do that while driving? <laughs> no, at, when I got home. <laughs> okay, I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, I opened up, it's called... You get my um, crystals, you know? I think it's called Andrico Rico. Okay. Or Rico Andrico. Okay. Malbec. I had a whole bottle. Oh, did you have some steak with that? No. No meat. I just drank the bottle of wine and I was happy. Mm-hmm. So anyway, fast forward, I had an opportunity to play the show again, all right? So, MJ. Yes. Let's talk about your favorite. What was your highlights? What did you like the mess, the most, the most from uh, Saturday Night Show? Okay, so um, my top two. Well, I have I have seven that I love. Oh, seven. I have seven that I love. Out of how many? <laughs> Out of like a lot. So okay. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't count. I mean, like that. Okay. You, do you like the fact that I open with uh, salt and pepper? Oh, man. Yes. I, <laughs> you, they on my, that's on my list. Push yeah. it. Yeah. I was kind of push it uh, real good. I was like. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I had to. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a throwback. It was spicy. I You've felt, been doing it. was yeah. very spicy. I felt spicy. Yo, it was yo, a Saturday yo, yo, night yo, song. Pie. Yeah, absolutely. I totally Saturday agree. Saturday night song. Totally yeah. agree. Yeah. You've been doing that. Um, but, okay, so here are my two uh, favorites. Um, Wifeable. <laughs> Masego yes. and Omar Xavier. Yeah. Yeah. That's demo number three, by the way. Loved it. Uh huh. And um, Ginger Me Slowly. <sighs> now, Ginger Me Slowly. <laughs> those are great titles. Yeah. yeah. Those great are song titles. I was like, what is this? Ginger yes, me girl. Slowly. You are speaking to me um, by so me, right? Is that mm-hmm. how you pronounce it? And um, I just love because it was like I love the words. I'm a lyricist. You're a songwriter, mm-hmm. so you you're a songwriter. So you guys know it's like she paints a picture, yeah, and she's talking to her partner or whomever, maybe a prospect, and she's just like, this is how I like it. Yeah. Not sexual, just, she's just speaking just in, in general. Just in general, mm-hmm. you know, bring me flower, ginger me with flowers, ginger, you know, it's just so like, mm-hmm. yeah, I loved it. Yeah. 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 So my favorites, um, I, I had to, on this particular show, um, I got a chance to, I, got, I was contacted by um, the management of a 10 year old rapper Wow. Young King Jai. Yes, that was He's good based out of Virginia. He's played in, in North Carolina, um, D.C., Maryland area, basically that, that area. Mm-hmm. And his song was I'm Gonna Be a Boss. Yes. Um, he's 10 and he's a clean rapper that sounds exactly like with the industry but doesn't use any profanity and he talks about what 10-year-olds talk about. Right. Being bullied, getting their grades, growing up. He has a song called I'm Gonna Get the Bag. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like he understands about that bag, right? Yeah. So uh, it was my honor to play this 10-year-old rapper on yeah. Taste Test. That's dope. I was excited about that. And then um, two of my other, one of my other favorite songs, of course, was Like Really. 
if you heard that mm-hmm. by Odyssey. Odyssey is this work producer I'm actually mm. working with right now. I have some some exciting news that I'll be sharing mm-hmm. toward the end of the podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, his song was called Like Really. Listen to the words. Go back. Listen to Like Really by Odyssey. O-D-D-I-S-E-E. Right? Okay. And then, of course, two more. And, I, and I'll, I'll move on. Losing Interest by B Slade. Yes. B Slade. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the yeah. drop, B Slade, all the way out on the Shots West Coast. Out. Yeah, B Slade was no, formerly known as Tone. He was a gospel artist that okay. danced like Janet Jackson and can sing like crazy, still can sing. Yeah. And uh, he just put an album out. The song, the, 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 the chorus is I'm losing interest and it's all your fault. Right. You've been in a relationship where this person is not rising to the occasion and you begin to lose interest. Yes. And you blame them. It's your fault. I wrote You're not several interested. songs <laughs> <laughs> with that theme. <laughs> right. 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 You know, so uh, it's it's really interesting. Right. And then um, and then one uh, one other cool thing I, I had an opportunity to play is um, the the sophomore album called Our Thing by Larry Wilson. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We know Larry. Thanks to yeah. Blue Francois for introducing me to Larry Wilson yeah. years ago. I'm Larry going to see w- him this weekend play in Atlanta. Of course you are. I want to go. Yeah. But I have to work Saturday, yeah, yeah. Sunday. So uh, I played his song called Afrocentric on that on that oh, album. That yeah. is a fantastic jazz album. You got, um, y'all got to get it. Listen, listen to, to it, it, man. Oh, my I, goodness. I, I, I'm telling you, it's Grammy worthy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's definitely Grammy worthy. It's a yeah. solid, it's a solid piece that he used local art. He used an artist and let an artist paint and do the cover art for the album. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. Genius. So, um, yeah. And it has a modern twist to it. Like it's, it's jazz, but you, I mean, anybody can little bob to yeah. it. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. So. And it, it gives you the diver- I mean, it, there's some slow songs, there's some fast uh-huh. songs, there's some up, I mean, straight ahead jazz. Yeah. There's a little salsa. There's, I mean, it's a little yeah, bit of everything. Every, yeah. Those yeah. are my favorite types of albums. Yeah. yeah. You just you don't know where it's gonna take you next. Ah, yeah. yeah. You don't it's know what to expect. Yeah, definitely like gumbo's a variety of things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. so that was it for Have a Taste and um, new releases. Any new releases? So um, I just heard Carlos Santana's album. Well, it's an EP actually. Mm-hmm. And by this summer, so he only released like three tracks, and it's oh, called wow. um, "Finding Mona Lisa." Is it uh, fi- in search of in Mona search Lisa. of Mona Lisa. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think "Finding Mona Lisa" was a movie. In <laughs> search of Mona Lisa, and he actually was inspired. He saw the Mona Lisa for the first time. So, I mean, this guy's been in the music industry for over fifty years, and he, you know, for a long time, he's probably been able to go wherever he wants in the world. And what he's in his seventies, I think, yeah. and he's seeing the Mona Lisa for the first time, yeah. and it, it inspired this album, and it's. Very mystical. Um, it's kind of he kind of goes back to his old style. One of my favorite styles is is when he was in '69 Woodstock, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's where that's probably the first time you've ever heard, you know, um, the whole Afro Cuban, oh yeah, blues that Hammond organ, yeah. the congas, the guiro, and then his electric guitar. You know, it's like Chicago blues <sighs> style, and it's just insanity. And so, but this is kind of like a throwback, but softer, more jazzy. His mm-hmm wife is on there and really? I don't know if you know she used to play drums for um, Lenny Kravitz oh no, wow I didn't know yes. that yeah. yeah she is so amazing to watch uh-huh. on those drums and so um, I enjoyed it and by this summer he's supposed to have 40 songs what yes so I can't imagine what he's going to do because you know you just I was expecting to hear like something oh what's Carlos Santana got going on this time so it was kind of surprising right 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 and it was very mystical it kind of it takes you into a whole nother world yeah he's I love music that transcends I love yeah. it it definitely transcends he's and he's going to be here in April at the he'll be back because he was here last year he's he coming year. back that's one of my big dreams I want to open up for him Speak just put it out in the universe. I will I will open up for him for negative money. Mm. No money. Just be, so those exposure books. You'll do it for the exposure Not books. Not even exposure. I don't care just to like Yeah. Just to do it. Just to be in his energy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oye, como va? Mi ritmo. <laughs> bueno, pa gozar. Yeah, mulata. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Mulata, <laughs> I think bolita. everybody knows that everybody song. Everybody knows exactly. Speaking of which, we, did you hear when I, for Hispanic Heritage Month, I oh actually had gosh. an opportunity to actually play his, uh, an entire themed Hispanic uh, show? 
No. Yeah. Oh, was, I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that yeah, one. Oh no, it's it's it was a one time thing, yeah. only oh. on air one time. So you have to wait until September. Oh wait, <laughs> so it's it's not even like in archives or no. anything. Mm-hmm. I have to wait until September. Yeah. Yeah. I might I might I might like slide you the the, the, the track list. God, I gave you an exclusive. Yeah. Ooh. You have to. Ooh. Arm I gave it no, my whole arm is like been twisted yeah. around. Now it's like upside down. I got you, boo. I got oh you. yes. <laughs> that warms my you. heart. It always warms my heart when other people want to embrace each other's culture and yeah. you know well I mean I, I too was and we'll dive I think this is a good time to lead into your interview yeah. um, before we take a quick break I have to say that I grew up listening to everything I mm. tried heavy metal I tried death metal I went through the the uh, gotta go to church after some death metal yeah I, I tried that <laughs> because I was hanging around with some friends at 14 15 years old and that's mm-hmm. what they were listening to uh, you know those crazy rock bands and I was trying to fit in you know skateboarding he was, he was, I, he was one of those I black wore guys black out with the yeah, yeah I was oh, one okay. of those kids I did that for like a, a semester <laughs> wait and, what yeah I did it for like a nine, you know two oh, nine weeks see, the, you know the beaches were always like that Really? You see, black, white, Filipino, Puerto Rican, yeah. whatever. I'm admitting that I was surfing. impressible. Yeah. You know, Playing like basketball. I, I respect that. Yeah, I mean, I went to the school was primarily primarily Caucasian, and I was going to Landon at the time. So, oh yeah, you know, okay. it's this jazz, but jazz and symphonic band mm-hmm. at the time, and I'm fit, trying to fit in. Yeah. yeah. With them I'm trying to be popular I was the guy that my name was Roberto Damian Lamar Robinson Emerson Sanchez the third <laughs> because I had issues <laughs> I can, you seriously know what? I yeah like that does it. not oh, surprise yeah. me about you at all yeah. I can see that yeah it's and I was totally I, I convinced them that, that I have. lived in oh, what was it what was the city um Oh my God! In San Mateo, California, and they were like, oh "Nah, God. man, San Mateo is a street over there off South Side, off, off San Jose <laughs> oh Road. Don't God. don't come at me nah. like that." I mean, they were calling me out on it, but I used to be a, a professional liar. Like I lied to fit in. To, fit, to in. fit in. This is what kids do. Most people don't know this. They do. It's so, normal. Yeah, it's normal. I did it to identity. fit in, and yeah. then once I realized, like, why? Why do I want to do this? These kids don't care about me anyway. <laughs> Man. You know, when you realize it yeah. and you Never, realize yeah. and you become your, your your true authentic self, mm-hmm. that's why I have no problem talking about my past in that way because I'm not that's ashamed real. of it. It was part right. of my story. It was a part of it. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's deep. And there's probably so many people out there who had the same experiences. So, you know, a lot of times when people say, well, why are you telling me this? You're not going to change my mind. And it's like, I'm not here to change your mind. I'm here to make those who feel the same way that I do understand that they're not alone. Right. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to have more time with Kim Retege. Yes. Michael Rumba. <laughs> Ryan Little. <laughs> and we're back. Welcome back to Taste Test Live. I'm Damian Lamar with my co host Blue Francois and Get MJ flesh. Baker. Hello. Guess what, guys? What's up? We're back and it's time to speak to Kim Retige. Yay! Yeah. Yes. Let me take a quick moment for those of you guys who do not know who she is. Kim Rodriguez is a is a leader, is a lead singer. Let me try that again. <laughs> this is when I edit my own show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Kim Rodriguez is a lead singer for Kim Rodriguez and the Black Cat Bones, which includes musical director Bernard Johnson, Kim McKinney, Elon Martinez, Tish Lopez, Alexander Hernandez, Diego Herrada Ventura, and Luis Ocasio. She's a graduate of University of Florida with a bachelor's in mass communication and a minor in education. Before she turned into a gator, she attended the University of Mississippi on a full scholarship where she studied opera, classical music, piano, and music theory. Mm. She is the top three winner of the 2018 Folio Magazine Annual Best of Edition, a semifinalist winner of the 2017 International Blues Challenge, Memphis, Tennessee, and the 2016 Jazz IBC winner and the 2015 15 Jack's Idol winner. The Black Cat Bones are currently wrapping up their LP titled No More Lettuce, produced by Christopher Flowers. And I'm so excited to have Kim Rodriguez Yay. here. Hey guys. Again. Hello. Yes. Welcome. Yes. So gosh, what a rap sheet. 
It, I, okay. I'm just going to say it like this. The Folio alone, but Mama Blue and Britt Westcott. Yeah. That was oh, yeah. fierce. Yeah. Uh, MJ Baker yes. was one of the top So guess five. what? Guess what? I'm going to I'm gonna brag a little fierce bit because singers. The, my, the managing director of Hemming Park, Friends of Hemming Park that I work with, had this wonderful, brilliant idea to get all of you guys on the stage at the same time. Oh, that would have been wow. nice. That would have been right? great. That was the second annual Get Downtown mm-hmm. event that happened in, in February. So I'm super, super excited to have witnessed all of you on stage in your element. Not one of you are alike. You yeah. guys don't sound alike. You're completely different. Sure. But you represent this melange of uh, Jacksonville, yes. this melting pot of, mm-hmm. of, 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 of diversity. And, and and girl power. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So um, you're a winner. Thank you. Yeah, you are. So are you, MJ. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She's so modest. <laughs> so how does that make you feel? Like, I mean, tell me a little bit about about your growing up. How what was what was it like? What made you sing the way you sing? What oh. made you want to be a singer? Well, it's so funny because I was that I didn't know as a singer, but uh, in church, that's where I started singing. Like mm-hmm. most singers, mm, I, didn't I know was that. yes, I started in, in the Catholic church. Um, but interestingly enough, because of my father's business, he had a very diverse uh, imp- group of employees. So one of his things was to go to their churches. So we would be going to black churches, synagogues, um, I did, did, Wiccans, I don't know. We were <laughs> oh, going wow. everywhere. <laughs> Not the wow. Wiccans. Way to go, get, go, go Dad. <laughs> he Way was go. just very big into, you know, being that village and... Ex- fellowshipping. And fellowshipping and experiencing that and, and exposing us to that as well. So, But I was that kid that was running around in church, bothering everybody, and my mom was in the choir and she was... You know, I'm going to take this kid and I'm going to bring her up here so I can keep my hand on her shoulder. And she did that. And I just started singing. I was three years old Mm -hmm. and I started harmonizing. That was the thing that caught her ear. And she was like, wow. And um, at first it was a big controversy to have a three year old up there on stage with the choir singing because they were just very serious. You know how church choirs are, which is very serious about um, their group. And then finally they they just let it go. They're like, "Okay, we can either let her run around in church and bother everyone <laughs> or she can be up here and sing with us and which you, you were more at home up there oh yeah I remember it you know you don't have a lot of memories of your toddlerhood mm-hmm. but that's one I remember is singing just and and harmonizing the harmonizing was a big thing for me that's really hard for a lot of people to do though it is to harmonize you would yes. be surprised at you know you have these amazing singers and they cannot harmonize to save their life so, so did would, was that I mean obviously it's in your blood we, yeah. we, we know that was there someone in your family that influenced you to 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 be a performer and to sing oh yeah I mean I come from a family of what we call presentas you know very dramatic people so my father was a musician my mother mm. was a singer and um my great uncle in Puerto Rico, he was famous Ibarro singer, which is blues and country. Um, and my uncle Frank toured with like Celia Cruz and Tito wow. Puente, you know, oh, he wow. was a conguero. And um, it's in my family history. It's so in my everybody roots. had a chance to spend some time with you and impart a little bit of oh, that. Oh, yes, definitely. Via their stories. You know, my uncle was on American Bandstand. I think it was 1969. Wow. But of course, with um, the Hispanic artists, it's really weird. Most of them are so archived that you cannot find them. Mm. You can find yeah. Elvis any old day, but... Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can't find these old boogaloo bands, and that's what that type of music was called. Mm. Um, that, uh, you know, when my uncle moved from the salsa world into the boogaloo world, which is Latin soul, mm-hmm. that's what that mm-hmm. is. So, yeah. That's, ex- that's amazing. So it's yeah. in your roots. So growing up um, you, from three until you really got serious and you kind of really knew what you were doing, what was that like? Hmm. You mean when I knew what I was doing or when I was comfortable with what I was doing? Okay, when you were comfortable, yeah. (laughs) I would say I I didn't become comfortable with my voice until um, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. And, 
you know, so for so long, you're you're mimicking other singers or mm-hmm. um, I'm not delivering my true self. I'm not, you know, just letting it. I remember this one time I was in high school and I was in the choir. I've always been in choirs. And I think all singers should spend time in choirs. Yeah. You learn how to sing with other singers. You learn how to harmonize. You learn how to deal with your projection or right. take it back. Mm-hmm. You learn how to be. Lots of control. Yes, yeah, so many different techniques of singing and um, I was singing in a choir and our teacher made us sing in a circle and I just got lost in this song and I opened my eyes and this senior was standing across from me I was only 14 and a senior was standing across from me and she was looking at me like I had 20 heads Hmm. she was like what is like I was a lunatic and I was so embarrassed that it suppressed Oh. That emotion for years. Oh wow! And because because she she looked at you and you felt judged. I just felt, yeah, I felt judged. I felt ridiculous. I felt like I was doing something wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When really all I was doing was I just fell into the music, and yeah. now I don't care. If you think I'm a nut because of my facial expressions and because of the way I move on stage and whatever, it's better yeah. than just standing still and doing nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you know there is a an, an artist? Um, oh God, her name fails me right now. Rochelle Farrell. Yes. She yes. Has the ugly. Okay. Oh. She makes faces, right, MJ? <laughs> Yes. I mean, like her lips are like contorted and she's like, I mean, she just makes the most weirdest faces. But when you hear Mm, what what comes out, you have to make those faces in order to execute that note and that feeling and that emotion. You know, Shaka Khan said, if you don't have gorilla face, then you're not singing. Mm. Right. You need gorilla face. That's that. That to, the, you know that animalistic. I yeah. don't care. This is what's coming out, and this is on my face, and my mouth being shaped this way is what's helping these sounds come out. Absolutely, and that's what's important. Yeah. yeah, I've seen lots of pictures of you in gorilla face. Oh God, but, but you so look many great. Things. No, <laughs> no, you, no. Guess what? You look like you look like when you see that you're like. Damn, she can sing. She's singing. Right. I, you're so right. The, I'll come into work because I do have a day job. I'll come into work and people put these newspapers and and there I am with twenty chins and you know uh, you see my all my teeth and right gorilla face all the way and I'm just like oh. But when they there think about again. that performance and why why you're in print, mm-hmm. right? You you forget all about. I'm it, over right? it now. You're over it now. I'm just like. I was getting a note out. Right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that was a good note. You know, I'll never forget that note. <laughs> I was tearing it up. Yep. That's, that's a good... So so when did you start Kim Rodriguez and the Black Cat Bones? I started Kim Rodriguez and the Black Cat Bones about... Uh, and I'm saying my name in the English version. He's actually saying it in the Spanish version. Um, I want to say like seven years ago okay. is when I started the group. And actually, I started it with an ex. <laughs> okay. So, and it's so funny. People so are like, thank you. Well, yeah, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I started that group and... Um, just because I felt like it was time to move on from the projects that I was doing that I had learned and it was just time to do what I wanted to do um, and just kind of take control of the show Mm -hmm. and take control over what I wanted people to hear and see instead of and, and instead of being told what to do which I didn't mind right. you know I was learning but it was time to for you time, time to move on for me to kind of take more of a leadership role and mm-hmm. even as the leader of that band I still for many years was not necessarily the leader mm. Um, sometimes I was, sometimes I wasn't, but I try to take it as I'm learning. I'm mm-hmm. learning from all these people that have come in and out of my life right. to be where I am now. Mm-hmm. So I try to look at the the positive reasons why beginnings and endings occur. Okay. Yeah. Um, N- now, as a as a woman band leader, as a female band leader, how do you? Um, like, what are some challenges? Do you feel like, because you have majority of men in your band, do you feel like you have had had to kind of prove yourself a little bit or garner some respect as the boss? Mm. I would say when I was um, 
first starting, mm-hmm. yes, definitely. And especially because, let's be real, I really didn't know right. my, I didn't really know the technical side mm-hmm. of being a singer, si- songwriter, a band leader, a vocalist, of understanding your sound production and understanding the importance of knowing the keys to your songs and of understanding, like, no, that doesn't sound right. Can we take it to a G blues? Yeah. I didn't understand that. I, I knew what I was feeling. And as I learned from these people, that allowed me to take control. Mm-hmm. And now with the group I have now, I feel like we're all equals. Mm-hmm. We're all on the same page. And no one's really the boss. It's definitely a great um, democracy in in my group. But uh I feel like we're all on the same page and it's easier to lead in that that, aspect. That's a good feeling, isn't it? It's a very good feeling. We have chemistry Because your rehearsals, I'm sure, are super productive because of that. Yes. Oh, yes. And and you, when you play live... I'm sure you already, everybody knows where everybody's going mm-hmm. next. Right, we yeah. feel each other. Yeah. We know each other. Um, and it's easy to, com- it's easier to communicate. Right. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, even just as a singer, turning around and, and, and giving someone that stop. Right. You know, you, you really don't know how to do that until you learn yeah, right. how Definitely. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think every band has its cues. I, I you know, I, I don't think there's one podcast that goes by without, well, I mentioned Erica Badu. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, you know, I, and that's I why that's why he, about her today. Because, let me just one reason why if there is if you guys um, do yourself a favor, there is a a video where she's performing liberation. Mm-hmm. OK. And it's it's the, the video is shot. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a blue light going on on the stage. That video to me and it's a modern video. She's got really long hair and she's got two braids and she's wearing this pilgrim kind of dress. Mm-hmm. Very unassuming. She's performing, and that video to me captures her essence of what I've seen live. The mm-hmm. several times I've seen her perform, they've she's they've captured it in that video. Mm. Yes, but you notice in the song she's walking around. She walks to the back of the band. She's communicating with her band to to the unassuming eye. Yes, you wouldn't know she's giving cues about the next song, the next few songs. <laughs> Most people don't know those things, but when you have a relationship like you have with your band. It just comes naturally, and you. Most people don't catch those things out right. of the audience. Yeah, so they don't. It, they think it's part of the choreography or something, and um, that in itself is very liberating to have that power mm-hmm. and that confidence. Mm-hmm. Even when you're playing, you know, I jump up and sing with a lot of bands that I have never rehearsed with, or you know, we only do gigs. We don't have rehearsals, and even that comes in handy to. It's to me. It's a powerful feeling yeah. to go and 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 throw up a cue or a signal, and they follow you, and they they know what you want. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm. And you know, because for the longest time, I didn't do that. You know, you're just staying there with your back to the band. Yeah, me and too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like, why didn't they stop? Yeah. I felt I felt it stop. Well, now I tell you. Now you do this. I yeah. tell you. That's anyway. a really good lead-in to my next question. This is my, my final question, and I think Blue and yeah, MJ yeah. have a few more questions because. I have so many questions for you. I have a racy question, too. Oh, yeah. Okay, so like speaking of bands, and, and because I called you a band diva earlier, a right? band diva. I had the privilege of, uh, I had heard you in Hemming Park before, thanks to Christina, who introduced me to you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Christina. Um, and then I saw you, I was invited to come to a uh, to the Blue Jay Listening Room. Mm-hmm. And there was the 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 uh, the Bay Kings band was performing, mm-hmm. and I think you guys were doing a showcase for people that were interested in booking the band for weddings. Now, the Bay Kings band, correct me if I'm wrong, has about twenty members locally. Locally, yes. Lo- <laughs> so I pro- it's like a local I, chapter. I think actually they they have more. I want to say they have over a hundred, but twenty wow. twenty active. It's like amazing. Yeah, you know, the top. So it, so I'm going to try to describe this to you guys. Okay. I, I, I get there. The Blue Jay Listening Room is in, uh, it's in Jacksonville Beach. Yeah, I've been there. You get there. It's upstairs. And it's a very small place. Right. Not a big stage. Um, some decent lighting. Um, there was... 
an entire horn section. I mm-hmm. think about four or five piece horn section. Um, there were two guitarists. There was a bass. Uh, there's a drum, and then three vocalists interchangeably. Actually, four vocalists that night interchangeably sang different songs. And wow. the drummer is singing. And the drummer singing. Yes. Wow. So you got a lot for. I was sitting there with a glass of wine, and I'm taking all this in and going, "Where? Like, this is. <laughs> where am I? Eat a brownie weed. It, dude, <laughs> it was. It was amazing. Music overload. Yeah, and. And, and so Kim gets up to the mic and she sings Etta James at last oh, wow. and laid it wow. out. <laughs> wow. I, I have it. Song. I have the video. I know I'm she blind. did. Which one? Yeah. At last. Oh, at last. At I'm last. Was, so I guess do, what I'm do doing? Go, I'd rather go blind too. I love She did. That one. So yeah. so for for all of my my Patreon subscribers, I'm going to release that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's wow. exquisite. Um so yeah. I love that. That song. was that's my wow. favorite favorite live performance and you just nailed it. You nailed it. Wow, thank you. That is that's a, a great compliment because that's a, a, an amazing song. Yeah. This is a historical song. She made it look mm. effortless. Of course, you had Gorilla Face, too. <laughs> I had Gorilla Face. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> no pretty on. The only thing that's pretty on that stage is, <laughs> I don't even know, my dress. <laughs> yeah. And your hair. <laughs> and my hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have pretty teeth, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Pretty teeth. You ready yes. for this question? Uh-oh. I'm ready. Oh, you know what? Etta James was, uh, I heard Etta James did, had a problem with Beyonce playing her for her She did. Pick. She had a problem with Beyonce playing That's crazy. Her Cat- in Cat- Cadillac, Cadillac Records. Records. Yeah. yeah. She so. was not. I wonder if she was just hating, though. I don't yeah. mean to speak ill of the dead, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I like the job that Beyonce did. Yeah, she did good. thought so. she did good. And I, Etta she, is my girl, so yeah, she, yeah, I know all about her life. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you a question. And I and you know what? Um, he refreshed my, I remember um, like the, the write up Folia Weekly I, I, I see a lot of I haven't seen you perform but I've seen a lot of writings and, and postings about you like because um, I follow Blue Jay Records I mean, I mean Blue Jay Sing The Room mm-hmm. um, so I've seen like pictures of you and stuff like that already now what I want to ask you real quick Ooh. <sighs> nervous how do you feel how do you feel about culture appropriation like Bruno Mars you know he's of course they um, you know he resonate with you know black culture well on a you know on a worldly level and then you got Justin Timberlake and then you have uh, 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 Lo- uh, Jessica wait what's her name Jennifer, Jennifer, Lopez, Jennifer Lopez doing the Motown yeah like how do you <laughs> feel about oh my god that was gonna we be my question this. for yeah. her no, well I, whoa my thing is I just wanted to talk about culture you know leave that question I, I just want to talk about culture appropriation like, yeah how do you feel like like for instance like like what I'm trying to ask is how do you feel about someone robbing someone of their talent because they they identify with a class of people like like Bruno Mars to me I love him like I don't care what it, like if he was Chinese and he sang and performed like that I don't care where he from I'm not gonna get mad because oh he's trying to act black like I like that like I don't under, like I'm still confused about that you know what I'm saying you don't understand that in our world today everything is mixed up right we people in our generation we have grown up in a world where we are familiar with each other's cultures and we're comfortable with each other's cultures and each other's food and we're comfortable with hearing different languages I mean when I hear people complain about bilingualism in the United States it is a certain generation that's doing it and it's not ours right and so to hear someone like Bruno Mars, who's what half Filipino, half yeah. Puerto Rican, Hawaiian and uh, yeah, <laughs> and do base soul, R and B, funk, yeah, all he's doing is I mean, is the American music that he grew up with right. and is perfectly comfortable with, and is taking that and making it his own. Um, you know, it's the same when you know Despacito came out, mm-hmm. and it's so funny because Puerto Ricans they want to hear these, you know the all Spanish version they do not want to hear what's his name I'm losing Um, my mind right now um, Um, Bieber they don't want to hear Justin but I love 
love the Justin Bieber version. We have yeah. Haitian desp- um, desp- Despacito. Despacito. Yeah, that, yeah. See, I'm gonna have to go listen to it's it. Like and a Creole version, but it sounds it's, it's like a merengue. You know, like we do merengue. In right. Haiti. Oh, th- like um, dance hall music. Yeah. yeah. Dance hall is famous for taking American music and turning it into yeah. you know wow. the Baham the Bohemian dance hall. Right. Yeah, yeah. And and I know so much about dance hall because when I was in college, we used to hang out at this club in Orlando called Jamaican Me Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was nothing but Jamaicans and <laughs> and they love some Puerto Rican girls and it was just fun. We had fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's how I feel about that. I feel like in our our world today, um, we don't have to dress up the black artist to be make him or her feel comfortable right. you know, to the white audience. I feel like we're already comfortable with that and nobody should be offended with experiencing each other. Other's cultures. Wow, great mm-hmm. answer. Amazing. This is, let yeah, me tell you, the, the, I have to, let me, I'm going to compliment the ladies today. Right? <laughs> <laughs> They're dropping this knowledge. And this wisdom wow. and this common sense. It's a it's a, a level of common sense yeah. that you just don't hear often. Yeah. Yeah. So maturity. I'm gonna go back and listen to this again. Yeah. Because of Whoa. course, you know, I mix <laughs> mix this all down and I'm gonna hear it fifty million times, but I'm probably gonna capture your words in, in print because oh, yeah. and, and quote you because that you said something, MJ, that was early, or earlier and, and your question how you answered Blue Blue's question, uh, Kim, was Yeah. Yeah. Just Amazing. great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I mean, I think it's beautiful what you're saying because we we all kind of appropriate each other's mm-hmm. music. I mm-hmm. mean, you hear it in hip hop, you hear it, you know, in all different, you know, places they grab, they take. I mean, and and it is, I think it's beautiful too that they're bringing in the reggaeton and, you know, it's becoming mm-hmm. more popular. African tri- music is become, coming over to America and people are, you know, loving that as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And, um, and like to kind of piggyback off of what he was saying, because you you made a, a statement on Facebook after the Grammys <laughs> yes, when everybody was Me talking about mouth. everybody was talking about Jennifer Lopez. And I'm going to say personally, I you know what? Jennifer Lopez is an amazing entertainer. Mm-hmm. I just vocally. I had an issue. I agree with you. Vocally, I had an issue. Like, and and not, and I'm not brown nosing. But if you were singing Motown, I would. You know what I'm saying? Because you have Ooh. the chops for it. Dang. No, but what I'm saying is, vocally, you yeah. have the Thank chops you. for it. So that was my issue. I felt like it was more. It wasn't for on. I felt like it was to make it pretty. You know what I'm saying? And to me, Motown wasn't pretty. It was gritty. It was raw. It was, you know, even if they were smiling, whatever, it was still gritty. I mean, when you hear them talk about we all rode on a school bus together to get where, you know, to get to these auditoriums and to sing, Mm -hmm. you know, the Temptations and all these different people that traveled together. So, I mean, you made this statement and then I I remember reading the comments and, you know, and just kind of seeing how people reacted to you, you know. I guess what did you when you made your statement about Jennifer Lopez and and how you felt about the whole situation like what did you learn from that or what can what was your takeaway you know when you were interacting with all these different people and you know everybody giving their comments and their thoughts I wonder what she said well oh (laughs) yes it was heavy it was heavy I would say first of all I agree with you and I did put that in my statement but I felt like vocally there were better singers to pull this off and um, but as an entertainment, I did see her, the the performance she did, and it was good, um, entertainment wise. And you know, vocally, there's so much technology up there on that stage. I don't know what was real and what wasn't. Mm. Right. And um, and and I did make that clear that I felt like there were better artists. But the only thing that I wanted to, you know, definitely make clear was that if this was a race issue or a culture issue, that that shouldn't be the reason behind not wanting her to um, do this. And in the Hispanic community, it was a big subject of conversation um, in regards to cultural appropriation. Right. 
And that bothered me because, again, I go back to all the colors of the Hispanic culture. And if anybody is going to tell me that I can't sing Gimbara because I'm not dark enough, we're going to have we're going to have some conversations because Celia Cruz is one of my biggest influences. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as the reactions that I got from everybody in regards to the statement that I was making, um, I learned a lot. I understood. I understood understand the negative history that black artists have um so do hispanic artists so do women so do gay and lesbians so do you know Mm -hmm. asian but the history that black artists have is is i feel like it's, it's just much deeper in american history and i understand what people especially when i was getting responses from my black friends on facebook what they were saying about that and i understood 100 percent what they were talking because i understand the history of motown i had to do a big paper about it where you know the artists were dressed up they were made to look pretty on stage so that the audience would be comfortable with watching them and um that was deep you know and and behind the scenes it was gritty people weren't being paid for their music they were given cars instead of money um here's your house but it's not in your name so when i'm done with you right. we're kicking you out you know th- that's horrible that our you know artists had to go through that and these are the people that we idolize today and so i see all sides of the story mm. i just didn't want you know motown I feel like people misinterpret things and they don't know history as well as they should. Absolutely. And they don't understand, you know, Tina Marie, she's not black. She's one of Motown's biggest artists. And then Motown's contribution to Blue Eyed Soul. They were the first ones to really bring Blue Eyed Soul. These are white people, Mm -hmm. you know, with soul, (laughs) with With soul, soul. Dusty Springfield. And I don't think she was a Motown artist, but still, she was old, you know, because also look at the evolution of the voice yeah. of vocals you yeah. know black women were known to come out and they had these big attitude voices they were telling you a story they were telling you how it is they were telling you how you felt where white women they had to come out very demure and sweet and pure and there came a time where all women like Janis Joplin and Dusty Springfield were able to just come out themselves and say this is me and I'm mad and I'm going to sing about it just like Aretha did last night and I have gorilla face and I'm going to have gorilla face while doing it no more pretty listen Janis Joplin was famous for no more pretty like yeah. definitely yeah. she let you have it on stage I adore it yeah well yeah. speaking of so no, I don't know how you feel about that answer but yo it's great, great. <laughs> I great. feel like you, no, you no. did it speaking, yeah. speaking of no more things subject. no more lettuce yes. no more lettuce oh my gosh I love yeah this so what Thank is uh, we're gonna we're gonna play that but give me set up set it up for us um tell us tell me about what you're working on this new LP that you're wrapping up with uh that's produced by Christopher Flowers well my mom always makes a joke and she's like, don't make Kim mad. She'll write a song about you. And I like to describe this CD as uh, it's definitely relatable. I feel like by men and women, you can just change her to he. And I just kind of feel like it's also a forgiveness. It, it's a chance for people to forgive themselves because we're only human and we make these mistakes through life. <laughs> but without making these mistakes, you know, without ending up in the bad relationship, without taking the wrong job without hurting a good friend we don't learn how to be good people right you have to learn from your mistakes and i think that that's what this album is about it's you know there's and it goes from one direction to the next so you've got some heavy blues in there um you've got some jump you've got the afro-cuban what I, we call jungle music mm-hmm. in no Agase, which means don't drown yourself in a glass of water my grandmother used to tell me that you know don't make a mountain out of molehill and then you have let's just love each other which is about breakup sex yeah <laughs> breakup mm-hmm. sex <laughs> you know and i do i feel like it's it's a chance for people when they listen to it they can relate and no more lettuce um it's that's about loving yourself yeah in so that's many different ways mm-hmm. you, you can take it as literal as you know i am not a little woman right never have been even when i was skinny i was still chunky <laughs> and you know it I started with, well, you like me like this when you met me and now you want me to change. 
famous last words from pretty much every woman on the planet. Right. You know, so that's what that's about. It's like, I'm not going to eat lettuce for anybody but me. Mm. Right. You know, this is who I am. This is what I have. And you can, you know, interpret that in many ways. So that's, that's how I <laughs> no feel about that album. I feel like it's it's a conversation and I feel like uh, it has different emotions and, you know, everyone can relate. Okay. Hey, this is Kim Rotegas and I'm with the Black Cat Bones. Here's my single, No Agase Es Un Vaso De Agua, which means don't drown yourself in a glass of water on Taste Test Live. Now put this in your boca. Your mouth, honey. Caliente, caliente. That was hot. Yes. Yes. I love it. <laughs> you brought another one. Let's just let's just roll right to the music. I think people want to hear music from you. We've been talking about so much music. Yeah. yeah, you know, the first one's got that whole Afro-Cuban thing. And mm-hmm. This one's a little R&B. It's, it's very sexy. Okay. So uh, what was the song that Donna Summer did that actually made her feel guilty with the ah? And all that. I love to love you, baby. Yeah. Ooh, I love to love you, baby. Yeah. 
this is kind of uh, inspired by that. You'll hear a lot of ah. Oh, okay. Nice. It's about breakup sex. Okay. And that can be very complicated. It ignites this crazy, I yeah. can't have you, but I'm having you now passion. Right. And then when that person leaves, you just feel so deflated. Or it goes the opposite, where in this case, he's doing it. We're doing it together, but I know you're doing it elsewhere, so mm. I'm going to go do it too. Mm. Oh. And you don't like that, do you? Oh. Mm. Let's go ahead and listen to it. Set it up one time for us. Let's just love each other. Can we take it from the Black Cat home? Right here on Taste Test Live.
one yet either. So nervous that's a, that's about a, it. That's a taste test live exclusive, it by the way. Exclusive. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. I hope you like it. Yeah. So can you can you like tell us when you, you're planning to drop this album? Oh my gosh! Can I can tell you a confession? Sure. <laughs> We've been working on this album for four years. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and it's it's. I'm trying just to like let it happen, and it's hard though. It's expensive. And it's hard. Right. But uh, I'm hoping by this summer because our goal is to enter it into the 2020 Blues, the BMAs, which is under the Grammys as emerging artists. Mm. So, you know, we did the IBC, the International Blues Challenge, mm-hmm. and we actually fall. They have a new category of contemporary world music, which is what we fall under because of the whole Afro, oh, Cuban, okay. um, nice. Ibarro, Boogaloo style that's in there. So... We're really excited about that, that the blues world is evolving, finally. Again. Again. Yeah. There's been several different evolutions of it, I think. I say finally because (laughs) they're really putting women in the forefront Uh, ah, of blues. Blues has always been a man's world. I got you. I'm with you. Okay. So women are on the forefront, and they're also accepting the fact that blues is not... does not just come out of the cotton fields of Mississippi. It does not just come out of the underground clubs of Chicago. That other that it's a regional experience, mm. which, in my opinion, tributes to everything we've been talking yeah. about tonight. Mm-hmm. You know, what is the American way? What is the culture? Who's allowed to do what? Inappropriation, etc. Wow, this has been the most insightful. Yeah. Uh, in depth, um, thought provoking, mm, moving interview that we've had in a minute. Thank you. Music transcends. So I want to thank you for coming by and spending Yay. this time thank with us. You. But pl- like, thank take a, a quick moment and uh, plug yourself. Tell people where they can find you on social media. Well, you can find me on Facebook. We can stalk each other. Um, we also have a website. It's K I M B C B as in Kim Black Cat Bones. And um, so it's Kim B C B dot com. We're also on Spotify. Three of our singles off the upcoming album, which will be titled No More Lettuce, is on there. Uh, Apple, Amazon, all those great music sites um, where you can get your music. And finally, Taste Test Live. Yes. It's a first. First listen, right here. It is a first listen. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kim. This has been exquisite. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, MJ. Amazing singer. Thank you, Blue. Yes. And good luck to you guys. Yeah, thank Thank you. you. Thank you. So, Blue, let's go ahead and uh, wrap things up. Can you tell us what's next? If you like what you heard, please follow us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Taste Test Radio. And head over to www.tastetest.live where you can find all of our old episodes and hear past guest interviews. Taste Test Live is a fully syndicated podcast and is on podcast services or wherever you listen to your podcast. That's right. Um, I'm going to take a quick announcement. Let me, I, I mentioned that I had a special announcement. Oh, yeah. yes. I have several. Okay. The first announcement is that next week we have Mr. Devin Way wow. in Orlando 28 Woods. Really? Yes. Yay. Yeah. He's That's my drummer. Major. 28 right. is my 28. drummer. 28. That's yeah. major. Yeah. And following Ebony Payne. Mm. Ooh. Ebony Payne. Finally. English. Finally. And she'll be talking about next month in uh, in Jacksonville. It's going to be Jack's Poetry Month, uh, a, an event that is put on by Hope at Hand. And they're partnering with Hemming Park to do a full month of poetry. And, and, and I'm so excited that's to really, have her on. You know, that's the first time I ever heard you was do a spoken word. I never heard you sit. The first time I heard you was doing spoken word, not singing. MJ. Really? Oh, yes. Yes. MJ. Yeah. yeah. It was wow. impressive. I was like, oh. Yeah. There's yeah. some there's some there's some spoken word on her Feel Something album. I, and I have on the, that the album, by the way. Well. Feel Something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Spoken word. So yeah, to uh, to poetry. I mean, yeah. it's poetry. I think poetry and music are a really good combination. Yeah. And I can't wait to talk to Ebony about that as well. Lyrics so. without music is poetry. Music without lyrics is instrumentals. Put them together and you get a song. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I have an announcement. Yeah. It is official. Okay. I have a release date. 
What? what? For my next single. What? Yeah, and it's going to be worldwide with a video. Ooh, what? Ooh, Ooh video. I like that. Do not put no signs on there and don't get nobody lost. Mm-mm. You know it's what? Okay. Don't do that. Yeah, I won't be doing the Solange. Don't do that. But on April 12th, I'll be releasing my first single with my new band. And the song is called Waiting. Oh, man. Um, it's wow. 11 years old. It was written by Cheryl Ross, and um, it is so poignant. And I believe you, we'll talk about more about Jacksonville when you when you hear the single. So April 12th, it's on a Friday. I'll be dropping it everywhere. It's going to be worldwide. It's called Waiting. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, and, uh, and the track is produced by Odyssey. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I Odyssey hope you guys enjoy. Dope. Yes. I can't wait. I'm yeah. excited. I think Jacksonville has an amazing local scene. Yeah. Something and I, and I do my best to we, we do our best to make sure we bring all of these wonderful artists. Oh, we appreciate it. Right here. We need yeah. people like you. Yeah. Yeah. To ex- help expose us. Bring yeah. us out there. That's right. You yeah. you are you need to be exposed. You Thank do. Thank you. Yeah. People Sincerely. need to know about yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of camaraderie here because I what in, in times that we've seen um, all the interviews that we've had, all the different guests we've had, there's been I call what I call overlapping circles of influence, mm-hmm. where a lot of our circles overlap. You know, I'm having Orlando 28 and Devin Way in, but they've worked with MJ, and, and right. I'm not having them because they've worked with MJ. But on right. their own merit alone, they're working on other art, uh, working with other artists, but right. they're also doing some amazing things as well. So we hopefully, work well together in this city, a lot uh, of us. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, collaboration is key. Um, yeah. Philip Pan, who was on your show recently, mm-hmm. he's on my CD. So. I can see that. I can see that. Of course. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. yeah. That's genius. I love it. Uh, he came in and he just did his thing. I didn't tell him what to do. He just did. Yeah, he looked like a genius. <laughs> he yeah. is a genius. Yeah, he really is. He really That's is. awesome. And he's got his hand there. He's doing mariachi. He's doing... Yeah. yeah. He's doing bluegrass. Yep. He's doing... Rock. Yeah. He did rock for a minute. Yeah. Ro- and he... Yes. And mm-hmm. when you... If you look at him, you would not no, see would him not in these different... That, yeah. Yeah. Genre. That's why you can't, and I'll say this really loud and clear, you cannot judge a book by its cover. No. Definitely not. You can't. You, you cannot. cannot. As a matter of fact, no. don't. I yeah. feel like we are proven wrong about every that time. every day. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Definitely, like, for damn, sure. did it again. So again, thank you, Kim, for stopping by. Blue, MJ, I love you. Yes. Love you. I'm so yeah. happy you got Ebony. You know, I've been I trying fun, to get her. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, can I Can I say some, make an announcement myself? Yes, a new release. Come on. <laughs> um, it's not a new release, but I was challenged. I just want to bring this up because oh, yes. if people are, were listening last week, I was challenged to listen to Solange his album um, when I get home. Right, mm-hmm. so I did listen to some of it on my way to Delray, and you can confirm with Twenty Eight. He was like, "Listen, I'm driving. Oh. This is putting me to sleep." <laughs> And I did. I started listening to it before I got on the road. And. You failed the challenge? I didn't fail the challenge. I did listen to every. I listened to every track. She almost had a car accident. And I. (laughs) Fell to sleep. I did. You know, I had. um, You know, there were one or two songs where I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Like, uh, stay flow. Stay. Stay. um, Stay Stay, to the floor or stay on the floor. That was really dope. And, um, yeah. And I was just like, yeah. I mean, she's. I don't I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but her beats were dope. I do agree with you that the features were wasted to me. Thank you. That's all I, mean, I was saying. <laughs> you know, I do I, I feel like it could have, you know, um but I I do want to take her beats and do a mixtape and rewrite them. <laughs> I mean, you know, just put my own spin. I think that would be interesting. I mean, be because I loved her. I loved the music of yeah. now, now, and see, for me, I would listen to her album when I'm just chilling and I don't want to think. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, because the music to me, I love instrumentals, yeah. instrumentals. So the music to me was dope. But I just wanted to let you know. 
that, that you I, accepted my I challenge. accepted your challenge. So, you know, there's always the thing. It's like, you know, kids, they're like, oh, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to taste right, which is why this show is called Taste Test Live. I don't right. know if we're going to taste this music, if the music's going to be tasty. It might right. be nasty. There is music for everyone, and there is music that you have to spit out. Yeah. And I, you know, I have come to the conclusion, I don't think that she cares what we think about it. (laughs) I have to agree. (laughs) I really, I really feel like she was like, this is how I feel. Mm. And this and is, there is a, there is a, some people are going to yeah. catch it and some people are not going to catch it. Yeah, there's there's an audience for that. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's also probably a sense of relief within herself to not want to try to please anybody. Right. Sets yeah. her free. Mm-hmm. And, and this is why I t- and so I mean so we don't spend a whole lot of time on this like we did last week but this is why I told people I mean you know I was telling people I said her sister is the entertainer her sister is the businesswoman she is an artist yeah she, she's a she's a, a musician you know she's a singer a dancer she's a visual artist so this album is one big picture that yeah. she's portrait that she's painted absolutely that's what this is it's a visual and she's using the music and sounds and different things like that to paint her picture mm-hmm. but you have to be able to visualize what she's doing and so it's kind of like that's why I say she doesn't care what we think so the last question for you mm-hmm. since you accepted my challenge mm-hmm. do you think it's a slow burn it is a slow burn I mean well I think it's it's going to be one of those things where you you'll say, "Oh, I can rock rock with this." Eventually. E- eventually. Like you'll be in the mood for a certain track. You know, to me, I mean, for me personally, it's not one of those things where I'm saying, "Oh, let me pop that Solange in there and get, you know, yeah. get right." Mm-hmm. You this is not a get right. This is uh-huh. a Oh. Let me put this new hit number five. Time to clean the living room. Let me put this on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Solange. I'm so sorry. Time to wash the car. <laughs> but Solange, I just want to say Solange knows. I see your picture, babe. I do. You're painting the portrait. You and see I her true it. colors. Yes. Shining through. But yes, I see the picture that you're painting. You're painting the portrait. I get it. Okay. All right. That'll do it for us, like. <laughs> yes. I don't think I have any more words. Bye, you yes. guys. Yeah. No comment. <laughs> Until next week. <laughs> Bye. Don't be afraid. <laughs>